Okay, um, yeah, so this is about translation modeling with bidirectional recurrent neural networks. And this is a joint work with my colleagues uh, Martin Sundermeyer, Tamar Akuli, and our supervisor Herman Nye. Um, okay. Uh, so let's start with a quick motivation. We have seen recently some very good improvements uh, using feed forward neural networks for uh, translation modeling. Um, I'd like to mention here the papers by Holger Schwenk, Heisun Lee, and of course, um, most notably, the paper at this year's ACL by Jacob Devlin. Um, well, and in, from language modeling, we know that uh, recurrent uh, neural networks can significantly outperform feedforward neural networks, um, both in terms of uh, language model perplexity as well as in um, word error rates for ASR systems. And uh, the advantage is obviously that they can take an unbounded history uh, into account to make translation or to make decisions to make predictions, uh, which is different from the feedforward neural networks where you have a fixed window of, um, uh, well, information that you can use. Um, well, and several people have tried applying recurrent neural networks for translation modeling, um, and that worked uh, kind of well, uh, as long as they don't use the recurrent neural network language models. Um, so once they do that, pretty much all the improvements go away. Um, well, and in this work, we're trying to try and again, and in the end, we're going to see that we can even improve on uh, translation systems that use recurrent language models. Um, and we're going to introduce two different types of recurrent translation models. One is word-based, that requires uh, us to have a monotone one-to-one -one alignment between the source and the target sequence. Um, and once we have that, uh, application of the recurrent network is pretty much straightforward. Um, and the other model that we're going to introduce is the phrase-based model, which makes sense because um, well, we're using a phrase-based translation and the phrasal um, alignment is just a byproduct of the translation process and we don't have to artificially impose uh, something like this one-to-one -one alignment on top of it. Um, and uh, if some of you have attended last or yesterday's SSST workshop, you're going to recognize uh, or at least see some, some things that are reminiscent of uh, the work that was presented by uh, the University of Montreal people. Okay, um, the, the next thing that we're going to introduce are bidirectional neural networks for translation modeling. Um, and their advantage is that they can use the complete future information to make decisions. And for translation, that basically means we have a complete source sentence um, at our disposal when making decisions. Um, yeah, and just would like to mention that all the networks that we're going to use in this work and experiments are so-called long short term memory uh, networks, the LSTM architecture, which has been designed to avoid this uh, vanishing or exploding gradient effect. Okay, let's uh, dive into the explanation of the models that we're introducing. We'll start with the word-based models. Um, and as I said, the first thing we need to do is kind of artificially create this monotone one-to-one -one alignment. First of all, we make it monotone by following the order of the target words um, and reordering the source sentence. Um, so in this example, there's no reordering necessary. Um, and there are two other th uh, things that we have to take care of, which are multiply aligned words and unaligned words. Um, yeah, and when we have a look at this example here, which was, an, which was output by our phrase-based decoder, uh, well, let's use the pointer. Down here on the left, we can see um, there is a multiply aligned wo uh, source word. And we uh, take care of that by first using an IBM 1 model to decide which of those two uh, alignment points we're going to keep. So we just compare the likelihood of uh, the comma uh, translating to surfer and the surface translating to surfer. We're going to keep uh, the latter. Um, and uh, the other one is then resolved by introducing an epsilon token into the uh, source sentence and into the opposite side. So these epsilon tokens are part of the vocabulary in the end. And yeah, well, I think it's pretty much straightforward to see that this comma is now aligned to the, uh, this epsilon aligned token. And the other thing that we have to take care of are unaligned words, like this comma on the target side here or the German word zur on the source side. And to do that, we now do a similar thing. We introduce a separate epsilon token, which is called epsilon unaligned, um, on the opposite side, which is then positioned next to the closest aligned word. 
Okay, um, once we have this one-to-one -one aligned sequence, we can define our translation models by factorizing over target words. Um, I would first like to have a look at the l bottom right model here, which is, uh, which is a correct uh, factorization of the posterior probability of the target sentence given the source sentence. Um, so we can see that we factorize over the individual target words. At each point, we take into account, or we, we condition the probability on the full source sentence and on the complete target history. And then we can simplify this model by making independence assumptions. Um, one would be to drop the, de the dependence on the, target, uh, on the target history, which means we have a translation model instead of a joint model. A joint model in this case means a joint translation and language model, which, is, uh, uh, which the term has been used in previous work and we're just keeping it. Um, yeah, and the other thing that we can uh, assume independence on is the future source information, which means we have now a unidirectional instead of a bidirectional model. And doing both at the same time, we get the simplest unidirectional translation model here. Let's have a look at uh, what this looks like in an example. Um, now, when we want to translate the word canon into the target word no, um, in the simplest model that we have, the neural network is, has available the only the source history, so the, the word canon is directly fed into the network and the complete source history is available through the recurrent connections. It's encoded in the hidden layer. Um, and this is uh, everything the neural network knows to translate the target word or to predict the target word. Now once we have um, a joint model instead of a translation model, that means we also need to take into account target information. So we also feed in the last target word that we have the complete target history is available through recurrency. And uh, yeah, this is what the network bases its de decisions on. And there's a third thing we could have a look at that is the, the those are the bidirectional models. Those can also look at the um, future source information. So again, the current source word is fed into the network and the complete future information is available through, through the recurrency. And this is basically done in practice by having two parts of the neural network um, that, well, are side by side. One processes the source sentence in forward direction, the other one in the reverse direction. And these are the um, uh, network configurations that we have um, in our work. So let's first have a look at the left side where we uh, depict the unidirectional models. Um, yeah, so we input the source word, which is in one of n encoding, and possibly if we have a joint model, also the target word, um, which is then connected to the projection layer. The next thing is our LSTM recurrent hidden layer, and this is then uh, fed into our output layer, which is class condition. So we use um, uh, OCH's version of the brown clustering in order to uh, make this more efficient and have a class uh, conditioned output layer. And on the right-hand side, we see the bidirectional version of our networks. Um, this is the deep formulation, which we found to be slightly better in our experiments. We call it deep because we are adding the second LSTM layer at this position here. Um, so again, let's have a look at it. Um, so the right-hand side is basically the standard. Uh, the same thing as here. We are, we are feeding into the source word and possibly the target word, and this is processed in forward direction, so from left to right. And um, this left part of the network here takes care of the reverse direction. So this is what makes, us, uh, or makes the future information of the source site available to us. So this only takes source words as input. And now these two uh, hidden layers are joined in a second LSTM layer. And again, this leads into the output layer. OK, so much for the word-based models. Let's have a look at the phrase-based RNN models. Um, so the idea was that we want to directly model the phrasal correspondence, which is given by the phrase-based decoder. Um, yeah, and that makes sense because we are not artificially imposing this kind of uh, additional alignment uh, into this thing. And we still, however, want to stick to words as input and output, output units instead of using uh, a phrase vocabulary um, in order to avoid uh, data sparsity issues. Um, yeah, so uh, th in this case, the posterior probability is uh, conditioned or is, is uh, factorized, sorry, is factorized over the, the individual phrases. So we are given I, capital I tilde phrase pairs 
and this E tilde and F tilde are the separate phrase pairs. Um, yeah, so we factorize over this, the phrase pairs and each phrase pair is again factorized over the individual target words. That looks like this. And well, let's look at this uh, in an example. What does it look like in practice? Oh, sorry, forgot one slide. Um, uh, yeah, so the idea is the, that we want to do this by introducing a no operation token, epsilon. Um, so different from, from work that you might have seen uh, that is going to be um, published at NIPS by Google or the papers uh, that were presented yesterday, and there's also one that is going to be presented um, later at this EMNLP by the group at the University of Montreal. Um, so instead of having two separate networks, one uh, enco encoder and one decoder, we do the whole thing in a single network. And we do that by introducing this no operation token epsilon, which is not part of the vocabulary, so it's completely different from the epsilons that we've seen before uh, in the word-based models. Um, and this basically tells the network um, not to do anything. There's, if, if it's on the source side, there's no information fed into the network, and if it's on the target side, uh, we're not evaluating anything. Um, uh, but what still happens, the, the uh, state of the network is progressed one time step. Um, yeah, and we do that uh, in our phrase-based uh, approach by first inputting all the source words with an epsilon on the target side, and once that is finished, once we have all the information of the source phrase encoded in our hidden layer, we start evaluating the target words one at a time, and we use this epsilon token on the source side. And similar to the word-based models, um, we can again introduce four different kinds of these models, depending on whether or not we assume uh, independence on the target history and or the future uh, source information. Okay, um, now we can have a look at the example. Um, this is uh, an example sentence here. Surface, for example, know this incredibly. I don't know really why we <laughs> selected this sentence, but um, the interesting bit happens in the second phrase, so where we have two source words and four target words. Um, and down here you can see the recurrence network unfolded over time. Um, well, and in the beginning, let's just walk through this. Uh, we input the source word surfer. So on the left-hand side, you could always see the source input. On the right-hand side, the target history input. And this, in this case, is a sentence start symbol because we haven't seen any target history yet. Um, and we evaluate the probability of the word surface here. Okay, um, in the next step, we input the first word of the source phrase, zum. We carry over the target history, uh, which is surfers, and then we feed those into the network, but because we haven't finished doing that yet, uh, we input an epsilon on the target side, which basically means we don't have to compute the output layer at all. Okay, in the next step, we introduce this word Beispiel into the network, uh, which is the last of the source phrase, carry over the target history, which is an epsilon in this case. And now, because we have finished with a complete source phrase, we can start evaluating the target words one at a time. So we do that. We start with a comma, then the for, then the example, and then another comma. And in all of those cases, we input an epsilon on the source side, as you can see here. So that's basically all the magic. OK, um, let's have a look at the experimental setup that we used to evaluate our models. Um, so we did the whole thing in rescoring uh, only so far. So we applied it on top of a phrase-based translation decoder. Um, yeah, and we did it on three tasks. One is the IWSLT um, German-English task, where uh, we use all available data for the baseline translation system to train it. And um, yeah, the in-domain portion of it, the TED data for uh, recurrent neural network training. And there are also two BOLT tasks that we are uh, evaluating on. So this is the, the, the same DARPA BOLT project that Salim Rukos was uh, talking about earlier today. Um, so here again, we have very strong baseline systems using a lot of data. Um, and the neural networks are trained on an in-domain uh, smaller portion of uh, this data. And uh, well, the network configurations are as follows. Uh, for the vocabulary sizes, we we remove all singletons um, yeah, in order to get to be able to, to model the, the unknown word. And these are the vo resulting vocabulary sizes here. Um, 
and we use uh, a hidden layer size of 200 for both IWSLT and Arabic English Bolt, as well as, uh, well, no, for the Chinese English, we use a hidden layer size of 300. Okay, let's have a look at the first batch of results. Um, so at this point, we do not use the recurrent language model yet in the baseline, um, and we compare with the we call it BBN joint model, BBN-JM, which is very similar to the one that was introduced um, by Jacob Devlin at this year's ACL. Um, yeah. And when we have a look at our models, we have the unidirectional translation and joint model here. And let's first have a look at the ones down here, which are the phrase-based unidirectional translation and joint models. All of those four uh, perform about on the same level as the uh, feedforward neural network here. Um, but once we use the bidirectional formulation in, in the deep architecture, uh, then we get some additional improvements. We get up to 1.6 blue on this IWSLT test set uh, using the bidirectional deep translation model. And uh, well, that kind of makes sense because, of course, now the network is able to use the complete uh, source sentence when it makes its decisions. That is nice. Um, we also tried uh, deep, deep architectures for the uh, unidirectional translation and joint models as well as for the phrase-based models and also bidirectional phrase-based models, but those didn't give us any additional improvements here, so they're not on the table. Um, yeah. So we can move on to the next uh, set of experiments. Now we are using a recurrent language model in our baseline system, um, and the nice thing is uh, we get nearly the same uh, improvements here um, when we use the bidirectional translation or joint models. So we get up to 1.2 blue on the test set and also 1.2 blue on the EVL 11 set. Um, yeah, and we can even increase uh, those results or even improve those results by using um, some additional uh, networks on top of that. So we combined four of these uh, network models here we get a small improvement again. We get up to 1.6 on eval 11. Um, but these, these improvements saturate very quickly. So adding a lot of uh, additional networks on top of that is probably not going to help us any further. OK, um, finally, let's look at the bolt results. Um, and I would like to stress that the baseline we're using here are really strong baselines. These are our internal uh, project and evaluation systems. And it's very, very hard to get improvements on those. Um, the thing is, we also are only using uh, a single reference here in these um, experiments, which is different from the results that were reported um, by the BBN group at ACL. Um, yeah. Uh, and when we have a look at this, we are using uh, or testing on two language pairs. Let's first have a look at the Arabic English. We get um, on this one test set, which is or all test sets are from the discussion forum domain. Um, on this one test set, we get 0.6 by using the, in this case, the joint model, um, and 0.4 on the other discussion forum test set. And for Chinese, uh, the translation model works better. We get point, point 0.1 only on test one, but 0.5 on the other test set. So um, as I said, uh, compared to other tasks, the, the improvements you can usually get with um, or on this data are very small. So this is really a really good improvement. Okay, um, to conclude, uh, yes, we have introduced two types of recurrent neural translation models, the word-based and the phrase-based ones. Um, the phrase-based uh, make more sense from a theoretical point of view uh, because they can directly use uh, the information that is output by the decoder and the, the same phrase segmentation that the decoder uses. Um, but it seems that in our experiments, the word-based models still perform better. Um, we also introduced uh, bidirectional translation models uh, that use the complete future source context and that helps our performance. Uh, well, and finally, our experiments show nice improvements on three tasks. We did it on IWSLT German English. We get 1.6 blue over strong baselines. And on both Arabic and Chinese English, we get up to 0.6 and 0.5 blue um, improvements. And all of these systems already use a recurrent neural network language model. so. Um, to the best of my knowledge, no one has uh, been able to get uh, additional improvements using recurrent translation models on top of these kind of language models. Thanks.
I ask some questions. Um, actually, I want to know the performance uh, with only the recurrent translation model. With without? Uh, with only with only the uh, neural translation model. With only the neural translation model. Um, yeah. Uh, so, the, like for for both, this is about the same. So, um, both the recurrent language model and the translation model give about the same improvements. And if you just use only one of if you just use only one of the two translation models and no recurrent language models, this is about the same performance you get here. I mean, uh, can you translate with only the BTM without uh, the baseline features? Um, oh, sorry, now I get it. Um, yeah. No, we haven't tried uh, removing the standard translation models with, uh, so far, no. Okay. Or only rescoring, we only did rescoring experiments so far. <laughs> Hi, thanks for a great talk. Um, I noticed that uh, the BJM works better on this task, but on the other task, the BTM works better, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just wondering if you have any thoughts on that. Um, so uh, we've been trying to figure out that question um, without having a definite answer. So uh, it seems that in most cases, the BTM works slightly better than the, than the joint model. Maybe because we already use a, a recurrent language model in our systems, um, so this is redundant information. And um, well, we think that it works better on the Arabic English because this system already uses a, um, uh, a sentence-wide uh, IBM One model as well. So we are kind of using the full source information already in the, in the original system. Um, maybe that is why, in this case, the translation model doesn't give as much improvements uh, as on the other tasks. Uh, so I note that when you uh, when you compute the uh, target phrase, the probability of t target phrase given by the source phrase, uh, you compute the individual words and then uh, multi multiply them all. So have you considered you first get the uh, the embeddings for the whole target phrase and calculate the uh, probability? I'm sorry, I don't really understand the question. So. Uh could so you, we, we compute the probability of the target word given by the source word. For each single uh, word? Phrase, phrase. Uh, the target phrase given by the so source you'd, phrase. So you'd use a um, phrase vocabulary instead? Or right, and you calculate the probability of each of the uh, words within the target phrase, and then you multiply, multiply them. Oh, you mean a kind of a bag of words model for the target side? Right. OK, no, um, I don't think, no, we really haven't considered that because uh, well, we want to want to preserve the order in, ordering information. Um, yeah. Let's see. Thanks. Uh, can you comment on the complexity of the approach? Because it seems to me that you trained the neural networks on less data than you would have available for the translation model. Um, yeah. So of course we have uh, to to be careful what data we use, um, but. Um, our general rule of thumb is that the maximum uh, data we can use to train uh, the, these models is about, um, what is it, I think, one, I think 100 million words. So that is, that is still feasible. Um, and in this, these cases, we didn't really uh, use the maximum amount of data available that we could use for training them because we are only focusing on the in-domain data and we wanted to do fast experiments. Um, yeah, but. We could still we, we could still increase the data amount here, so uh, yeah, it is comparably efficient. Can you just give us a number? One day, two days, one week? Okay, um, yeah, you want to have a number uh, for the edible sati data. Uh, so this these models here trained about for two days. Okay. Same same as for the the BBN model here, and for the ACL we get as much as I don't know seven days maybe for the Arabic. Unfortunately, we have to move on. Let's thank the speaker again and go to that part.